to open it up. I'm sure that there are many questions out in the audience. We have um, Vanessa and Carol, who have a mic. So if you do have a question, if you can raise your hand. Hi, um, Marcella Bailey. I'm with Sony Pictures. And a um, question for you in terms of... Nice you job hosting our president oh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I stayed away. No. <laughs> um, I did not. It was pretty wild. So, so my question is, you mentioned that there's still kind of this command control within um, LAUSD, but you also mentioned agility. And you also mentioned a lot of the things that you want to change and yes. focus on the eight different initiatives. What are you doing within the organization to really kind of change your leadership to start to think differently about what they do? To be clear about the fact that uh, this is the predisposed belief you have to have to work with us. Um, second, to be clear, this is the skill set, and this is the direction. And to have conversations as frank as, if you don't believe that I can't keep you, no disrespect, just can't have you. Um, and, uh, and then uh, choose a leadership team that buys into that. So I don't want to sound cold about that, but it's just pretty simple. And so as we're making the decisions, so that by I mean, the goal is by June 15th, the whole leadership team will be in place. That will lead this work. And I relish and am thrilled about the thought that some of the leaders um, that are on the team now will be able to carry this work forward and that we will be able to build leadership. And I'm also thrilled about the fact that people will be joining this team who can bring those skill sets with us. You're not Hispanic. Is that work for you, against you, or is it just neutral? I'm not Hispanic. I'm not black. I am not <laughs> Arabic. I'm white. Um, I'm a white male. Um, and uh, I am incredibly conscious of that issue. And I'm conscious of all the kind of invisible privilege that comes with that. And not the economic privilege. Didn't, we don't have any means to grow up with that. But we grew up with the whiteness that occurs, but particularly white men. <laughs> and the fact that you get untold passes on lots of issues. Um, and so where I'm comfortable with is putting the bread on the table and talking about it. And knowing that um, uh, you grow every day in cultural confidence. Um, but if you're, um, if you stumble about being able to uh, find language to talk about it, you actually can't lead in a diverse community. So that's how I think about it. I think about the fact that um, it's important that leadership, and it's a collective in LAUSD, um, have as much powerful skill diversity as well as gender, racial, ethnic, language diversity so that youth get to see numerous possibilities in a very multi-ethnic city, very multi-ethnic society. Um, so um, I do the things which I'm capable of. Since I'm not capable of changing either my, my um, ethnicity or my agenda, I can acquire language skill. I can listen. I can, um, I can learn publicly. So those are things I think about, and those are things that, as a leadership does, a uh, team will do around those pieces. The other piece to that is, um, they're all really important pieces, but in my mind, they're not the central um, kind of denominator that, that I think this entire city and school system struggles with, and that is poverty. Um, poverty cuts across every single group, uh, Anglo included. Um, especially um, in parts of the valley around this case. And if you take student achievement in LAUSD and you cut it across every group, the cut that occurs around poverty is the most disturbing, arresting, and chilling, and that has to be an issue of focus because poverty cannot be destiny um, around uh, the issues of possibility for students. I mean, if, if there's another question to that, I don't know if I answered your question, but that's how I think about it. Goldie. Good morning, my name is Goldie Buchanan. I'm the manager of the Parent Organization Network. Uh, my question is around, I know that you mentioned at parent engagement as one of your priority um, issues, but I worry about whether or not that's going to be lost, as it usually is, in all the other high priority issues that you have on the table that parents, once again, will be the last thought 
around all those issues. How will you ensure that that does not happen in this case? And how can community-based organizations that work with parents on a, on a daily basis uh, be of some help to you around making that happen? Great question. It's one that, as we built the team, um, I thought a lot about. Because I, I worried about you know, our algebra initiative, our A through G, our AP. I, I just listened to them all out, and I said parents as well. And so one of the ways, uh, I can't ensure that it's going to happen. Um, but I can do everything I can to uh, be clear that I've got markers along the way that will be uh, the best I know how to. And one of them is to have senior leadership uh, in a position where we haven't had it before. And that is um, a senior leader on the cabinet who's responsible for parent and community engagement. And so as I did my organizational structure, um, parent and community engagement was a senior leadership position. And I'm going to be thrilled about having a leader come and do that work, which is actually highly matrix with instruction, um, as opposed to kind of this one off who like wants parents at this. Um, and so this person will help to both build the leadership of the system and do this piece. A second piece is um, to track every single year. This piece, like we're tracking student achievement. Um, so on our report card of my uh, metrics, parent engagement um, in a non-token fashion is part of how we're going to hold ourselves accountable around this piece. How can communities and parent groups help? Um, two ways. One way, uh, and I, would, I don't, I'm going to say this as directly as I can, because it's something I'm experiencing, we've got to stop fighting um, together. There's lots of different parent organizations that are in stress with each other. And that isn't healthy, and that is not good. And we've got to find a way uh, so that representational parent organizations feel an equality of agency, um, and then a quality of opportunity. And uh, that's going to be really important. Um, so it's not just you know our uh, language learner parents group, or our special education parent groups, or African American parent groups, or our um, uh, uh, magnet and gifted parent groups, that we become so fractured that you know um, that doesn't help. Um, and to build kind of a, a one team alliance around that. That's going to be a very important piece as we do that. The last piece, um, so I offer the criticism, I also want to offer a provocation, and that is parents give up their voice too easily. Um, and uh, the last thing you want to do is cause yourself yet another problem. But the reality is um, persistent loud voice, not persistent whining and complaining, but persistent loud voice moves the system. It really does. It matters. And it matters that people can stand up and hold the transcript and say, uh, excuse me, not one of these courses actually wears credit. Not that the H1G certified. They don't even have credit. What are you going to do about that? I, I think training and helping us do that is really important. This uh, organization, uh, <coughs> Mayor's Partnership, I, all the acronyms I always forget, but it's, I think it's PLAS, but it's the Mayor's Partnership Schools, they incubated a piece of work that, that I found so intriguing that what we want to do is work with them so that we can actually then spread that with that across the system, parent college. And that is the idea is how do you simultaneously build parent voice to push back um, and to lift at the same time, and that's what we're going to be about um, as well. I wanted to follow up um, to that question, Goldie, about family and community engagement. I think during the time you've been at LAUSD, uh, you, you've seen, two, I think, two initiatives that really bring policy in clashes with parental engagement, one being the Equal, uh, equal Partners uh, Resolution from Viola Flores Aguilar, as well as the Public School Choice and the Advisory Component. And I think that there, there's, there was this clash between policy and parental engagement, yes. which revealed a lot of different things. One are the obstacles to parental engagement and the actual structural components that make it difficult. Uh, you know, just as simple as welcoming environment, um, you know, not, not being existent within the schools. Uh, as you've gone through that process of those two initiatives, I, I'm more interested in how you've seen what, are, what have you perceived to be the structural challenges uh, and I know you're going to be addressing, you know, part of it is going to be through hiring and having someone in your staff who's going to focus on it. 
but what insight has that given you in terms of what are the actual structural and cultural challenges for, for parental engagement? We are so into this issue around public school choice at the moment because it contains a piece that we've got, to, we've got to change. We have to do it better. So part of the public school choice process is this parent advisory vote. And it doesn't work. I mean, it actually doesn't work at all. Um, it has engendered, in my observation, only terrible behavior. It has engendered bad behavior in staff who work for LAUSD. It's engendered bad behavior on parents where they become co-opted into a staff slash union issue. Um, it has uh, given witness to um, students watching behaviors that are just truly um, are not healthy around that. And, and we've got to figure out a different way. So I've made a series of proposals to improve public school choice. And one of them is we have to do something different than this vote around this. And part of the vote is, at the end of the day, the data is also very upsetting by how tiny a fraction people actually muster themselves up to come into these pretty, sometimes very toxic, sometimes very uh, um, uh, agitated environments actually cast the vote. And if we want parent engagement, we have to actually provide the safest way <clears throat> so we can hear you. Um, and then a way where you can engage on the substance. So we don't have an answer yet, but I'm giving you one example around that piece. Another piece um, to think about this is parent engagement isn't a PTA meeting. Um, it's just not. And it's not um, signing that you've taken the stuff out of the knapsack on Friday for the younger youth, or you show up for, you know, uh, open house at high school. That is actually not parent engagement. That's parent information, but in parent engagement. And so the idea of how we think about engagement is not information. And we've, we've fallen to the ladder because it's the only way at the moment we know how to do. So we give you information. Um, yeah, we should do that anyways, um, but actually we need to now figure out the issue around engagement. And I haven't met, I mean, 99.9% .9 of parents, they don't want to run the school. Very clear about that, and they don't want to teach, and they certainly don't want to do yard duty, and and that's like great because I think the fear is that that's what the school worries that engagement leads to. What they want to do is understand how they can contribute to their kids' improvement, and part of that is letting you know stuff about the kid that you don't know because you don't raise them. I do. They're at my kitchen table, not yours, and if. We can do a good job, which I suspect we will, of allowing that kind of knowledge transfer. We can only do better by the youth around this case. Um, and the reality is I have to rate and evaluate my principals and teachers on how well they do that. And that's going to be thorny. And the only way how to do that is that we are going to require parent and student surveys as part of the consideration of a multiple measure approach of holding the adults in the schools accountable, and myself. And I, it's a very, I know it's very funny, and I acknowledge right up front that is going to be, um, that's going to make people really uncomfortable. And my response is, uncomfortable is not graduating, uncomfortable is incarceration, uncomfortable is sleeping under the 10, uncomfortable is not having health care. Getting some feedback from parents doesn't rate on the level of uncomfortable, in my opinion, on these places, and that's how we're approaching it. Uh, my name is Ken Martin, and I'm with Catholic Big Brothers Big Sisters here in Los Angeles. And we work with a lot of different uh, school districts, including LA Unified. Um, the continuing resolution just passed uh, uh, <coughs> takes about 75% of the funding out for mentoring uh, in the budget. Yep. So I'm, I'm asking uh, what your vision is for working with uh, community-based organizations.